Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Nojo Coward coming at you live from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, the heart of Southeast Asia, everybody. It's a pleasure to speak to you today. So, <clears throat> today's video, I wanted to talk briefly about ayahuasca. Um, you know, people people all ask me all the time, and I, I actually have a lot to say about it. In fact, I could do several videos on ayahuasca, psychedelics, drugs, and things like that, medicines. And I, I actually want to start talking more about this because... <laughs> I'm running out of shit to say about Cambodia, guys. <laughs> um, anyways, I digress. So, so what is ayahuasca? Okay, well, ayahuasca is is a medicine. Now, it's also a drug. I mean, like it is a drug technically because it does alter your consciousness. Like, don't get it twisted. It it is a drug. I mean, a drug to me is anything that alters your consciousness or state of being. But ayahuasca is for me more of a therapeutic type of drug it's it's almost like it's like work because it makes you face things you don't want to face it makes you see things that you you might you might not want to see and i'm going to talk about a few experiences i've had that have kind of changed my perspective on things and what i think it does for me um ayahuasca it, you know for me uh has definitely had an impact on my life and what I think it does, for me, and, and again, guys, I speak for myself. Uh, there's people all around the world that have done this. I don't speak for anybody but myself. I'm talking about my experiences and what, and what I've gotten from it. Now, I've done ayahuasca eight times. I have the opportunity to do it pretty much every couple weeks because my friend Adrian Bear brews it here, and it's 100% legit. So if anybody out there is doubting it, well, you guys go fuck yourself because this ayahuasca is legit. Okay, I knew that from the first time I did it with him. So my first experience uh, was sometime last June, and some of you might want, might have seen this tattoo right here, my shin tattoo, and my buddy Adrian has the same tattoo. Well, in my first my first uh, journey, um, the the theme was basically being true to myself as a protector being true to myself as a fighter and a warrior and being true to myself in terms of like following my dreams with like being a coach, being a teacher, things like that. And I kept, I kept having these recurring visions of these three black swords, um, namely just, just everywhere. Like what they weren't even on my body. I just kept seeing these, these patterns of these three black swords. I don't, I don't know why three, I don't know why they're black. I don't know why, why they were swords. I don't think that's the point. I just, that, that was my vision. And basically the swords represented me, like one of, not my duty, not my only duty, but one of my duties on this planet is to be a protector of the people that I love and people I care about, including my friends and my woman. Now I don't have a woman, but I did, and it was my duty to protect her. Now, if any feminists are getting pissed off, well, we don't need a man's protection, blah, blah, blah. Okay, go fuck yourself, okay? I'm pretty sure if you needed a man's protection and he was there to help you out, I don't think you would be complaining. Sh shut the fuck up, all right? I digress. The, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's my pleasure to, to, to be a protector, to, to have that energy. Um, and, and some of you might not really feel what I'm saying, you know, and that's fine, but that was my experience in my first journey. That was my main experience is that, is that one of my main duties is to, is to be, is to be that guy, is to, is to be a protector, to be a warrior. Um, and I would bleed and die for my friends and family and for the people I love. And that, and that, 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 that was drilled into my head during this journey. Anyways, uh, I've had other trips where there was somebody that I know. I'm not gonna say her name. It's just, it's just, it's just lady. I, it's just woman I know. And I, since I've known her, I always kind of had a bit of a crush on her. Um, for whatever reason, it wasn't even necessarily that I that I clicked with her necessarily. It wasn't that she's the most beautiful one, most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Pardon me. It's just that something about her made me like her a lot. I don't know what it was. I, it's just something, maybe, maybe it's because, like I said, I feel the need to be, to be a protector of some kind to her because I feel that she needs it and I feel that she would appreciate it. I, on my fourth and fifth journey, all I could think about was her. 
all I could think about was her, and I and I and I fell in love with this woman. I, I actually like even when I was done, I was in love with her, and I couldn't stop thinking about her. But I knew that in reality, she didn't like me. And in fact, to this day, she does. She she actually doesn't like me. Like she doesn't like me as a person. She she thinks that she thinks that we have nothing in common. She thinks that maybe I'm I'm a very aggressive guy. She thinks that maybe I'm an asshole or whatever. I'm a meathead or whatever she 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 perceives me to be. She hasn't given. She hasn't taken the chance to actually get to know me in here. She 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 just she's for whatever reason I just rub her the wrong way. And it's fucked up because this this such this powerful vision of us being together or 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 at least trying it or something it was so intense and so fucking real and so like it was yeah it was just so real and fucking raw and it would, oh man I, if I if, if I could just put it into words but in reality there's that, that doesn't exist. So I think that what ayahuasca does for me is it takes me into a parallel universe to an alternate reality where these feelings I have are real. Because I do believe in parallel universes. I believe in alternate realities. So that's another example. Something else, one last thing I want to mention is that I used to be a very aggressive guy. And I still can be sometimes, I'm not going to lie. You know, sometimes I'm hot-headed, I'm quick, I'm quick to lose my temper. Hold, hold on a second, hold up. Want to make sure. Sometimes this, this fucking camera cuts off and I uh, pisses me off. But uh, see again, right? But I used to have. I used to like feel the need to like project this mat, this over masculine energy, this aggressive like tough energy, and you know, it pushed people away. It makes people threatened by me, men and women. It it, it makes people scared of me. You know, when I don't want people to be scared of me, I want people to feel comfortable around me. But for whatever reason, I, I, I felt most comfortable being like this fighter guy, like this tough guy, you know, super serious or whatever. And there's no need for that. I don't, I don't need to do that. I mean, dude, look, look at this shit. Look, look at this fucking grapefruit in my arm. Do I, do, I, do I need to walk around acting tough? No, I have no reason to act tough because I already look tough and I'm already big and strong anyway. So like, why do I need to do that? So what happened is I was tripping balls and my friend Eileen comes up to me and she has this bouquet of flowers that, that are wet and she's doing this with the bouquet. She's throwing the water on me and I look up and I'm just feeling it and I'm embracing the feeling and like it feels good, you know? And she takes the flowers and she rubs them on my face gently. It's, it's like a soft hand. It's, it's almost like a woman's hand with like nice long nails like gently scratching my face like rubbing her hands against my, uh, against my face. It felt so good. And the message that I got was, it's okay to be gentle. It's okay to show, I don't want to say a feminine emotion, but like, it's okay, yeah, like it's okay to be sensitive. It's okay to, to fucking smile and have a good time. Like it seems ridiculous to some of you maybe, but I really was like that. I really was like an asshole and I, I had a really hard time like opening up and making friends because I always felt the need to be guarded and closed off. And, and still to this day, sometimes I do, but I make more of an effort now. So I'm not saying ayahuasca is like a cure-all. It's not going to just all, all of a sudden fix your fucking problems, but it's going to give you the, the vision. It's going to give you the materials that you need to work with to better your life, you know, and, and, and it's it's okay for me to be more gentle like a flower you know what i mean i've got the swords now i need to get some flowers or something right so so i can you know so i can uh, put put more meaning into that but uh anyways guys i mean i could talk all day about ayahuasca obviously words can't even begin to describe the journeys i've had on this words can't even begin to describe the places that ayahuasca has taken me and the impact it's had on my life. So I mean, anyways, I'm I'm probably gonna make some more some more videos on this today. And uh, if you guys are interested in coming to Cambodia and trying ayahuasca, it is here to be had and it is legitimate. It is the real deal. Now you can do it in South America, and maybe some of you would prefer to do it there. You know, I have nothing against that. That's fine. I don't live in South America. If I did, I'm sure I'd do it there. But I know it's freaking expensive. Here, it's not expensive. And it's the same shit. Um, my buddy Adrian is a shaman, and he makes ayahuasca on a regular basis. 
And if you guys want to get a hold of him and are interested in trying it out, um, I, I highly suggest you do it because it's a very intimate, like friendly environment. Everybody here is super nice, super cool, and he knows what he's doing. He will take care of you and make sure that you have the best journey you can possibly have. You can contact him uh, via email at Tohi Healing. That's T O H I Healing. H E A L I N G at gmail.com. You can visit Tohi Living.com. That's T O H I Living.com. Uh, he's also on Facebook, Tohi Living, and contact him, guys. I mean, he, he, he really does know what he's doing. This guy needs to get more appreciation, needs to be more well known because there's nobody that I know of in Asia that does this. So why not take advantage, you know? We actually have a retreat coming up uh, on Rabbit Island off Kite, Cambodia, March 26th of this month. Obviously, it's March, yeah. So in a few weeks here, and I'm going to be operating the kickboxing portion. Uh, I'm doing kickboxing sessions. My friend Eileen will be doing things like tarot cards, fortune telling, things like that. She, she, she's very good at what she does. Um, and then Adrian's obviously the shaman. He's going to be operating the ayahuasca portion. So if you guys want more info on that, just contact Adrian. As I said, tohiliving.com has all the info. Uh, I'm No Joe Coward. You guys can email me, nojokestriking at gmail.com. Bitches. It was a pleasure to speak to you guys today. You can all go fuck yourself. Peace.